It's truly an honor to be here. I stand here in an audience of leaders. You are disrupting. You are innovating. You are reforming. You're not on the sidelines. You're determined to be part of the solution. And yet, as much as my heart asks me to be optimistic, I am uneasy about the world forming before us. I see the foundations of global cooperation, global decency, that our world built not so long ago, shakier than ever. When I was 18 years old, I fled a brutal dictatorship and found refuge in this country, the United Kingdom. I seized a welcoming hand that I will forever be grateful to. But can you imagine the welcome I would have received today as a young person looking for a future? I keep hearing about a globalization success story for hardworking women in productive industries, especially in the Asian countries like Myanmar. At Oxfam, we work with some of these young women on labor rights. Like millions of others, they are trapped at the voiceless end of supply chains, trapped in debt, forced to compete with each other for poverty jobs. And I know talented African young girls and boys, like those in my village, Ruti, in Uganda, who, in fair circumstances, could become our world's greatest space scientists, biotechnologists, and so on. Yet, our world crushes the possibility for them. And then we all lose out. We lose out on their brilliance. They are fetching water, they are carrying firewood. They are among the 800 million people who go hungry every day. It's a loss to all of us. Friends, you could have not picked a more appropriate theme for your forum today than fault lines. Let me offer one very clear line of fault. Eight men, eight men, now own as much wealth as half of humanity. 3.6 billion other people. The top 1% now own more wealth than the bottom 99%. That's a fault line. You know, as I do, that no amount of charity will bridge that divide. We must indeed break free from this economic model that's rigged against the majority. Thank you. It is a model that sees talent squandered and that invests in those who already have and not those who could do so much. So at Oxfam, we are interested in new, e in new ideas for a different economic model. One that can take advantage of technology, innovation, and disruption, but that is driven and shaped by human need. It is a model that should tackle rising inequality, climate change, and that should boost the power of women. We want to discuss ideas about a more human economy. Private enterprise and private endeavor is at the heart of this human economy. We need business to drive this human economy, but it is the right kind of business. Businesses that create decent jobs and pay living wages 
that restore the environment rather than just extract from it, and that treat women and girls equally. Thank you. Thank you. So critically, we need businesses that are not just dominated by the needs of their investors, but where their workers, the farmers, their suppliers, and the communities have a real stake and power. And getting that right kind of business will need more than just legal compliance or commitments to corporate social responsibility. At Oxfam, we are increasingly convinced it will require some reforms to how companies are structured, what their incentives are. And it's time to be honest too. It's about who has power within those businesses. Increasingly, companies behave as if shareholders are the only interests that matter. This is not just wrong morally, but it hurts the economy and it even hurts the future viability of the business. In the 70s, British companies paid out 10% of their profits as dividends to shareholders. Today, they pay out more than 60% of their profits to div as dividends. More money for shareholders and more for executives rewarded for increasing margins, all that comes at the expense of workers and producers in supply chains, but also at the expense of investment in innovation. So friends, there is a better way. For centuries, we've had businesses that had more duty of care. Cooperatives, social businesses, worker-owned enterprises have been growing and thriving. Commercial success stories like the Spanish multinational Mondragon, like John Lewis here in the UK, demonstrate that market economies can go beyond an obsession with growing shareholder wealth. Business models like these need support. Without the enticement of high rewards, they won't attract as much capital. Governments will have to support them through tax schemes, credit guarantee schemes, and through other tools. And they will need impact investors who help grow the businesses that prioritize the people they impact, not just their investors. This is the point of the human economy. The market doesn't decide everything. We decide what we want business to deliver for people and planet and we make those businesses happen. Thank you. <clears throat> so I remain optimistic. Innovators, disruptors, social entrepreneurs, seismic resistors, as, as Stephen, Stephen has called you, I urge you to focus your attention on reforming this abusive economic model. You must drive the transition to a more human economy. We can make this a fairer and more sustainable world for us all. Thank you. <clears throat>